This is Joshua Hart from JTH Boxing. Today I'm here, I'm joined by Johnny Nelson. Johnny, first of all, how are we doing, mate? I'm good, thank you. You know what, it's been an excellent night of boxing here in uh, Telford, surprisingly. And you know what? Turn me over! We, we, we were ahead. We were ahead. It was the last fight and we just got turned over. So we second lost to London. Uh, but it's a good night. It's been a good night in Telford. All the fights have been good. Does that mean you now move through to the final with the fact that you come second? Yeah, yeah. So top two, we moved to the final. So uh, we didn't win tonight's tournament, but the top two moved through, so we're through anyway. Surely so at least a little bit happy. At least you're through to the final and you're not out on, like, obviously, Manchester and Leeds. They're both... No, New York Leeds, aren't you? Manchester and Birmingham, they're both gone now. Uh, first of all, how... How proud are you to be able to represent your city, but in a different way this time? You know, obviously you've represented them in the ring many, many times, but this time it's something different. You're a team captain, you're leading a bunch of fighters. How special is that to you? It's very special to inspire uh, young fighters coming through, and that's what it's all about. Yeah, inspire grassroots coming through. You know, uh, uh, this is my this is my little niece here. Yo, uh, and, and so she's from Huddersfield, and so you listen to this one. So she loves the boxing. She watches the boxing. If anything, if, the, if this shops like this do anything, they aspire young young ones to get involved in the boxing. The stuff behind the scenes, the stuff inside the ring, and so it's just been a, a all round pretty good. It's just it's just nice to see it's something different. Obviously, you know, in boxing nowadays we used to seeing so much, you know, oh drug test this, drug test that. But today we were just here, and we just got to see a load of people come into the ring, and they were fighting for pride and to make a breakthrough. And it's just nice to see something like that, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is nice. And people think boxing begins on TV and ends on TV when you turn it off. Boxing begins at grassroots level, you know, when you don't see things like this, when you don't see kids that have never had the opportunity get the opportunity and come through, when you don't see the battles. like And it's the, young, it's the, it's the off, off key promoters that actually do that, and they're the ones that, that take the risk. Uh, and nobody praises them when they lose money and they give them stick when they, when they make money. So again, I think, again, if it inspires one fighter coming through, one young, young woman or a young man coming through, to me, I think he does a great job. I want to quickly talk about Sheldon McDonald. Obviously, you and Sheldon are very close to your family. How proud are you of him tonight after his victory? Very proud. I think he, he's learned so much from that fight. It was a, it was a tough, dangerous fight for him. Uh, Sheldon showed excellent boxing ability, discipline. Learned from him the, the last time when he, when he boxed uh, uh, in the tournament. Uh, he lost, but he learned from the loss. So now what he's doing is he, he's come back, box smart, box clever, got the shot through, got the shots through and got the job done. So I'm really proud of him. And obviously he did get dropped in the fight and obviously at the moment, in the time, it doesn't look great. But you know, once the fight's done and he's got the victory, how good is that for him? And how beneficial is that going to be from leading into the future? Massive, massive. I, he needed, he, I'm even though it getting put down, he knows what he did. He knows when he switched off. He's learning each fight, and that's what you want. You don't want every fight to be a pushover because what happens is when eventually it happens and you test it, you don't know what to do. Sheldon's going through every possible experience to, to know what to do in a fight, so I'm glad. I want to quickly talk about what's coming up in boxing as well. I'm not going to try and focus on the negative things. I want to just talk about what's good and what's coming up in boxing. Um, so we've got Lee Wood versus Josh Warrington coming up in just three weeks' time in Sheffield. It's always good to see these types of domestic battles. And it's a domestic battle for a world title. How excited are you for that fight? I'm very excited, especially in the home of boxers, for as far as I'm concerned, in Sheffield. Lee Wood, uh, an ex-gym mate of mine, uh, and his heart, he's now matured as a fighter. And so if you'd have said this fight five years ago, I'd have said Josh Warrington every day of the week because he would have broke his heart. But Lee Wood's matured now. Lee Wood's a, a smart boxer. Uh, he's now confident in, 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 uh, and he fights with belief in himself. Josh Warrington's not the fighter he was, but the fighter he is. Still makes him a dangerous fighter. Uh, so again, it's an exciting fight. And how does that fight play out for you? How do you see that fight going? I think, uh, I think uh, uh, Josh Warrington has to out outbox and keep, uh, keep him under pressure. Um, uh, and keep him, um, keep him um, um, under pressure if he, want, if he doesn't want Lee Wood to come away with the fight. I want to talk, talk about fighting the undercards as well. Terry Harper, she faces a career toughest test in Celia Breakhouse. How, how does that fight play out between Terry Harper and Celia Breakhouse? Terry Harper, it's nice to see former world champion Terry Harper back in the mix again. Terry Harper is very fit, very conscientious, still very ambitious as a fighter, and I think I really like that fight. I should tell, sell a load of tickets. And I also want to talk about um, Tyson Fury versus Francis Ngannou. It's a different type of fight, but it's always sometimes it's quite nice to see these type of crossover fights and two men challenging themselves in different ways. What do you make of a crossover fight like that? Well, it's, it's entertainment. You know, you, would you would you seriously compare it with Tyson Fury against Usyk, Ajax? No, you wouldn't. You know, it's entertainment. And in, in, in Ngannou's world, 
of mixed martial arts or fighting in the octagon, you know, they believe this guy's uh, uh, capable of beating Tyson Fury, as they, they, th they thought about Conor McGregor when, when he fought, fought Floyd Mayweather. So it's just getting the argument done, getting the, 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 um, the, the intrigue across. You know, it's entertainment more than anything else. Does it mean anything in the boxing world? Nah, not really. Um, uh, but, uh, but to see Tyson Fury perform and, and tick that curiosity box, yes. I think a fight on the undercard that will mean something, not necessarily to the global scene of the heavyweight division, but the British scene, definitely. Uh, Fabio Wardley versus David Adelaide. Uh, first of all, it, it's a great fight, isn't it? It just is a great fight. Fabio Wardley is, 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 is happy to be underrated and disrespected by fighters because of his background. And I think that actually does him a massive favour because people don't realise he's as good as what he is. So I think that's a really good fight. How does that fight go? So we saw a little altercation between the two at the red carpet the other week, and that's something we don't really like to see in boxing, is it? Fabio will be a bit too smart, a bit too cute, uh, and just have a little bit, bit too much left in the tank. Uh, and I think Fabio wins. Now, see, the British title isn't on the line, but if Fabio is to lose, what, what should they do with that British title? Well, I don't know. I don't know how the, the British Boxing Board of Control are actually looking at it, because if he loses, he loses the belt, but the belt doesn't go to, to his opponent. And finally, I just want you to give a message to the team London, the governors, ahead of the final of the box off. No. <laughs> uh, you know what? We were, we were heading this all the way through until the last fight. And so now London's just pipped us at the post. How can that happen? We've been doing so well so far. And, uh, and actually, and actually, actually, the first round he touched down, so they should have counted him out. But they gave him the round. But So uh, London's pipped us at the post. I can't believe that. There's no such a... Bastard. <laughs> but you know what? Good on them. Good on London. It's been a great night. Number one, number two. Abash. That's just got wrong written all over it, hasn't it? <laughs> but it's been a great tournament. Johnny, thank you for your time. I'm going to let you go now. And uh, best of luck for the final. Thank you. Thank you very much, Johnny.